Hello and welcome back to Just Say It. I'm your host, E. James, broadcasting live from the beautiful Peace Garden State of North Dakota. And behind me on the wall is this great seal of North Dakota. Well, I'm just happy you've joined me on this beautiful day and uh, glad to have you tuning in, whether you're watching live or whether you're listening to the replay. Welcome back to Just Say It. What does slow living mean to you? That's my question for you today. Well, we're, we're going to find out because my guest today is an expert and passionate about all things slow living, whether it be cooking, family, lifestyle, health, or parenting. And in 2008, my guest made a New Year's resolution to use her crock pot slow cooker every day for a year and write about it online. And that simple idea led to 10 books, six weeks on the New York Times bestsellers list, a highly trafficked website, and a robust social media following. And I'm talking about Stephanie O'Day. She is, as I said, passionate about all things slow living. And so I'm going to bring her up on the screen now. Stephanie O'Day, welcome to Just Say It. Thank you, Dee. Thank you so much for having me and for that warm introduction. I'm so happy to be here and to meet your community. You are most welcome, Stephanie. Now, Stephanie, I want to also tell our listeners that you're kind of a big deal. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you've appeared, you've made, made appearances on The Rachel Ray Show, Good Morning America, NPR, and Oprah.com. So I am just thrilled to have you on Just Say It. Well, thank you. And I shared with you earlier that that and a dollar will get me a cup of coffee. So <laughs> I'm, I'm very, very happy to be here. And um, I like what I get to do. I like that I get to write. And I like that I get to help people, um, primarily women and, and of the women, primarily moms. Um, but I, I do have men who write to me and I have college students who write to me. And um, the fact that I get to do this from home in my pajamas is is pretty awesome. And I get to meet you, so thank you. You're welcome. Where is home, Stephanie? I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, right now we're recording and it's 6 p.m. tonight, my time, Pacific time, and we haven't hit daylight savings, but the sun never came out today. So we're surrounded by fires and where we are, we're perfectly safe. But I'm sure, as you know, San Francisco is known for the fog. So the smoke is stuck on top of the fog and it blocked the sun and it, it made national news because it never rose today. Wow. It's kind of eerie, I would imagine. It, it is. It's very mm -hmm. Armageddon-y. <laughs> well, thank you for, for joining us. At least you're indoors and you're mm -hmm. out of the... Yeah, with an air purifier. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stephanie, slow living. You're an expert and you're passionate about all things slow living. Define slow living. You bet. So as you mentioned, in 2008, I made a New Year's resolution to use my crock pot slow cooker every day for a year and write about it online. And that was awesome. And I enjoyed everything about it. And I created all of these different slow cooker recipes. And as you mentioned, I, I got to go on TV and talk about slow cooking and I loved it. But then they invented the Instant Pot and I started getting all these emails and phone calls from people saying, you really need to do Instant Pot recipes. And so I bought an Instant Pot and I goofed around with it and I just didn't like it. And then because I live in San Francisco and on the doorstep of Silicon Valley, I started paying attention to kind of this frenzified atmosphere surrounding just the hustle and bustle and, and everyone seems to be in a rush. So that paired with the Instant Pot, I started having these kind of like voices in the back of my head saying, well, just because you can do it fast doesn't mean you have to and it's okay to slow down. And I sort of realized that this, this was the universe talking, this was the voice of God talking, telling me, just relax, just embrace the slow and, and be mindful and be present and, and don't rush and 
yes, you can cook a whole chicken in 20 minutes, but that doesn't mean you have to. It's okay to to go slow. And um, and so it, it then morphed into more books. I wrote a book called How to Live Slowly. And then um, from there, I, di I did a memoir of um, which I called The Mommy Blogger Next Door, which sort of shared my my whole trajectory. And then I also, um, I started getting into uh, intermittent fasting. So I ended up actually writing a book on intermittent fasting that is also selling well. And then um, the the last one that I did was called Clean Less, Play More. And um, I think with the slow cooking, which ironically, even though it takes longer than the Instant Pot, what I like is I can put it on early in the morning. I'm still caffeinated. I'm coherent. I can dump it all in and push the button and walk away. And then I can do the things I want to do. And so same with the clean less, play more. I don't want to clean. I want the things clean. So I like the idea of, of giving the, the kind of have to's over and done with. So there's more time for the want to's in mm -hmm. life. And, you know, it's getting a bit cooler here. I don't know about California, but here in the Western states in North Dakota, mm -hmm. Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, it's getting my that, girlfriend's in Colorado and said it snowed the other day. It did. It did. We we made a visit to Colorado over the uh, Labor Day holiday weekend and we got out just in the nick of time before that snow came. Uh, so cooler weather and fall weather just Really, I the I think the slow cookers are going to come out of the cabinets, don't you, Stephanie? I, and I, well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but I think also, um, uh, it's the easiest way to cook from scratch because you can put all your ingredients in and um, push the button and walk away. So if you want a home cooked meal, everything you put in the pot is going to stay in the pot and come back. And then I think also, I'm sure you've noticed with all of the, the COVID-ness is that people are cooking again mm -hmm. and, and they're, they're going back to their roots and they're using dried beans and, and um, the, the forgotten frostbitten roast that they bought on sale at Costco two years ago. They can bring it back to life in the slow cooker. Yes, yeah, slow living is is coming back. That's a positive, I think, that COVID has brought about, and the 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 um, just getting back to maybe some old fashioned ways and slower ways. Uh, uh, one of my previous guests on Just Say It referred to it as a halt to the hustle. I like that phrase a lot. The halt to that, yeah, I li I likened it to pushing the pause button on the remote control. Is all of a sudden all of the extras in our life, they were just done. And, and it sounds silly, but many times we say yes to obligations that we don't want to do. We say yes to the backyard barbecue because we feel like we have to, or we say yes to a birthday party that's three hours away, which isn't an ideal time, but we feel like we need to do it. And so it, it's sort of nice to now have your weekends free. Um, I have children that still play after school sports. So the fact that we're not rushing to soccer practice and we don't have our, our Saturdays filled with game after game is, um, it's a bit of a blessing. It, it, it's, it's a sad blessing because you know why <laughs> this is happening, but, but hopefully when we come through this, which we will come through this, um, mm -hmm. there will be some reprioritizing. Yes. Stephanie O'Day, tell me about, you just mentioned parenting and you have children of your own. Uh, you have been known as, or you consider yourself, the mommy blogger next door. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> well, uh, so the the reason that I started the um, the slow cooker site, a year of slow cooking, is I abruptly quit my job um, directing preschool centers, and I was fortunate that my children could come to work with me. But my then two year old. Um, was getting sick. She was vomiting sporadically and we didn't know what it was. So I assumed it was daycare germs. And so I quit. Um, and then because again, we live in San Francisco, uh, that wasn't really an option because the mortgage is quite high here. So I wanted to have find a legitimate way to make money working from home for myself. And I started paying attention to mom blogs and that they would share 
um, about their family life and write about it. And um, advertisers would put money on their site and they could make a legitimate living that way. But I am actually a pretty private person. I wasn't interested in sharing family details or putting pictures of my kids up on the internet. So I liked the um, kind of tight focused niche of a recipe site. Um, you're giving Google what people are searching for. So it has really good SEO, which is search engine optimization. And so I, I thought, okay, so I'm a mom and I'm in a blog, but I'm gonna um, write a recipe site. But ironically, I am not the best cook or at the time I didn't consider myself the best cook. I just used my crock pot. So it sort of all came together as a New Year's resolution. Um, and that's how a year of slow cooking got started. On the bottom of the screen, Stephanie, is the links to not only your website, but also your Facebook page. And on your Facebook page, by the way, I found a, a recipe, one of your recipes I have got to try for rice pudding in a crock pot. I love, <laughs> <laughs> I love well, rice good. pudding. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm happy to convert you to all things at <laughs> crock pot eat. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes. Well, you know, I, you don't have to convert me. I'm already there. I love it myself. Uh, crock pot slow cooking is one of my favorite things, too. And so um, you talk about uh, parenting. What, what advice would you give to new parents? And, you, you know, I think from what I'm hearing, Stephanie, you have a heart for young moms. I do. So yeah talk you, to you, young you talk about that. well it's ironic as my facebook feed is um scrolling on the bottom of the screen is probably my best advice <laughs> would be to, <laughs> to limit social media um as talk, much as you talk can. to young moms yeah talk to you know, young moms. It's, it, it's tricky it's such a double-edged sword um but i i think when you are in the moment, but you're also thinking about sharing the moment with your Instagram or your Facebook followers, you immediately disengage from being present. And what your kids want and your family wants is you and all of you and all of your attention. So there's definitely a time and a place um, to goof around on social media. But my suggestion would be to schedule it and to really pay attention to the draw. If you find yourself feeling a little, panicky that you haven't checked in with your virtual friends um, and you think that you might have a tiny bit of an addiction, um, I would suggest thinking long and hard about it and, and maybe talking to someone. Um, these websites are built with um, the idea that you will become addicted and, and the little likes and the shares, it's this dopamine kind of drip, drip, drip that um, Sort of gets you excited and it, and it makes you want to keep coming back. Um, but it doesn't work when you've got little kids watching your every move and really just want you to be fully present. Mm -hmm. I love that, Stephanie. That's such good advice. Be present, be engaged with your children or your child. What are you, what are the biggest challenge that, challenges that you or you or other parents face today? What do you what do you think are the biggest challenges? Um I I would say the social media, um, probably video games, um, devices and screens and in, in general. I think one of the best things you can do is um, decide at a certain time every night that the devices go away and to go outside, hang out in your front yard, your backyard, your weekends, try and be outside as much as possible. Just sort of go back to your roots. I think a lot of times people think their kids are going to fall behind or they're not going to know how to code at a young age and, unless they, they know how to type and goof around with the devices that as toddlers and ages three and four, and I promise you the same way you as an adult learned these devices, your, your kids eventually will have no choice and they will learn them too, but there's no reason to, to push it in any way. Um, I try my hardest not to be a judgy person. Um, so that said, if you every once in a while are, are pushing your toddler around the stroller and you have to hand them a device, um, for your own peace of mind, do it, but, but, but be mindful and maybe not do it every single time and not use it as a crutch for 
looking around and, and paying attention to your surroundings and, and having a nice long conversation. Even if you end up singing the wheels on the bus over and over and over again, there's definitely <laughs> value in that. One of my pet peeves, Stephanie, I have to share this, is parents that are finding an escape on so on on the screen on a on a cell phone or a tablet whatever and not you know giving the attention to their children or their child when you know they when they need to be when when maybe they need to be attentive maybe yeah. at a a public place and a park yeah. or something and and they need to be attentive but but they are needing an escape i get that i get that i, I definitely think there's a big problem with self care and, and yes. taking the time to pay attention to your own needs because you can't help anyone else if you're not taking care of your own needs. And and I completely get it. And it's the same thing if you're escaping with a glass of wine and and you're zoning out. It's it's the exact same. Mm -hmm. so, well, Stephanie, you're a big fan of extreme self care. So what does that mean? Yeah, so so I actually get up at four a.m. in order to have my self care time. And a lot of that now has to do with the fact that we got a puppy over our uh, pandemic lockdown. So we are the proud owners of five-month-old Sheldon the Basset Hound. And uh, if you do pay attention to my social media feed, um, I don't exploit the children online, but I absolutely <laughs> exploit Sheldon the Basset <laughs> online. But in, in order for me to have quiet alone time, which I really need, and, and um, if I'm going to give myself to to my kids and my husband, and then I do also work full time, if I'm going to give myself to work, um, I have to carve that time out. So, so my suggestion to anyone who says they don't have enough time for self care is to begin to get up earlier. Um, not maybe 4 a.m. for you, but um, creep it up by 15, 20 minutes at a time until you have that time to maybe journal in the morning, maybe do a prayer session, be, become mindful and aware and set yourself up before you have to start taking care of other people and um, in reacting to your day. So when you take the time to, to get your own needs met, you're not in quite as a reactive state. So you do have to make that little bit of effort to maybe start your day a little bit earlier than then you might normally do that or, or that but I that, would. Maybe. That, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's my advice. Some, some of my, um, my friends and the people that I work with in the Facebook groups, they prefer to stay up late and have their, their me time between 9 PM and 11 PM or something like that. And I don't think it matters um, depending on your circadian rhythm of, of what works for you. This is just what happens to work for me. I also really like baths, and um, and I announced to the family on Sunday afternoons, okay, leave me alone, <laughs> and and I'll I'll climb into a bath with it with a book. Oh and yes, very relaxing. You mentioned a few minutes ago, Stephanie. I'm talking to Stephanie O'Day. She's my guest today on Just Say It. You mentioned clean less, play more, and that that's a method you wrote about. T tell me about that. I, I did. So I um, I think it was back in 99 and I started reading Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And I liked them, but it, they were really geared towards businessmen. And I was not a businessman. And so I wanted to figure out, okay, so in order for me to feel successful, I wanted the house to be a certain way. And for me, it was I wanted to be able to invite friends or my parents over uh, with that maybe a 30 minute window where the house is always company ready. And so now we've got three kids and we try our hardest to get these seven daily chores for a highly successful household um, done. And so it, it's very simple. It starts with making the bed, keeping the kitchen sink empty. Um, we do a quick bathroom wipe down and the bathroom wipe down is not daunting in any way. So my children were younger, they would take a bath at night and the floor would get wet and I'd put a towel in front of the bathtub to get all of the drips and spills and that got damp. So I would just quickly use that to wipe around the base of the toilet and the base of the vanity. And when you do that quick bathroom wipe down every day, 
it keeps things kind of sparkly and shiny and dust doesn't have time to congregate and get gross and, and icky. So, um, so there were three. Um, we try to empty the garbages every day, um, all of them, including the, the scraps of paper that my kids fold up and leave in little piles throughout the house. Uh, we walk through with a garbage bag and get rid of those. Um, we set a timer before bed and do a 10 minute tidy. And since there's five of us, um, you can really clean an awful lot in, in 50 minutes of combined workload. And then uh, very simple that we have a, if you get it out, put it away rule. And, um, and so the kids are, the kids are pretty good. <laughs> I love that clean less play more method. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an advocate of um, getting more done by doing less. And that's my, some, sometimes that's my goal of the day. That's my intention. I want, I've got a lot to do. I've got a lot on my yeah. agenda. How am I going to get yeah. it all done? And sometimes, yeah. Stephanie, don't you agree that you have to involve other people? You have to involve your family, even small children. They can do mm -hmm. a little job. They can do something, a they little can. task. They can. And even if it's not done perfectly, you're, you're, the, the hope is you're creating capable adults. So even if the towels aren't folded the exact way you would fold the towels, if they're folded, it's fine. Nobody's going to inspect your linen closet. And if you have friends that are inspecting your linen closet, then that's that, that's a different problem. <laughs> I had to get over the perfectionism. I had to get over it, just get over it, wanting everything perfect and let them help. It won't be perfect, but let them yeah. feel that they can be involved. Let the children feel that they can be involved. Well, Stephanie, uh, I wanted to go back to something that you mentioned uh, a little a while ago about fasting. Mm, um, yes. You, you've written a book on intermittent fasting, and uh, I'm not sure what that is, but sure. uh, you're an advocate for this eating style. Uh, what is it and why are you in favor of this? Sure. So um, I am 43. And my uh, my baby is ten, so I figured after I don't know she was eight, it was time to <laughs> to finally lose those last ten pounds. And so um, I started paying attention to my energy levels and how I was feeling throughout the day, and started doing a lot of research on intermittent fasting. And it it seemed like it was a good way to regulate hormones and regulate energy, along with um, boosting your metabolism to, to shed some unwanted weight. So um, the name of my book is Two, Four, Six, Eat, and it is Intermittent Fasting Simplified. And I truly just look at the calendar and look at the day's events and figure out um, when I want to eat and pick my feeding window. So it could be two hours or four hours or six hours, and um, depending on what we have going on. So if we're invited to um, a party or something like that, I will shift my eating window to meet those needs. Um, and then I essentially just eat what I want, but stop when um, when the, my eating window is closed. And the fact that it fluctuates and it changes is a really good way to boost your metabolism because your body is either in this feast or famine state. And so it burns the food quickly um, and, and rather than, than kind of being dripped food all day long. So I think we all sort of have heard the, the former nutritionist advice of, of advice of eating five or six small meals a day. Well, when you're doing that, you're always in this fed state and um, your hormones, your insulin is a bit higher, always ready to digest, digest, digest. And, um, and it ends up actually slowing your metabolism. That would be, uh, I think fasting is something that takes a little bit of discipline, doesn't it, Stephanie? It, it does. Well, it's interesting because we had um, talked about the slow living. I find that I'm much more mindful and aware, um, one, by, by limiting the feeding window, but two, of deciding whether or not the food is worth it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have something really, really good than just sort of mindlessly shovel food in my mouth, which um, I'm human. It happens. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not something that we have to 
stick with religiously uh, work, right. as you said, we're human. And sometimes we need a little reward or a little right. something. Absolutely. Well, and that yeah. also sort of turns into self-care is when you're doing things mindfully and you're aware and it's a conscious choice, uh, mm -hmm. you're, you're already have shifted in, into a more mindful and, and slow living lifestyle. And I find too, Stephanie, that just listening to your body, listen, listen to your body and your body is intelligent. It'll tell you what it needs. And, yeah. and it just takes a few moments just to, just to list, just to take right. a few breaths and listen. Right. And sometimes we're so busy. We get so busy that we don't take time to just pause, take a few breaths. And well, what is my body needing right now? Oh, well, just some hydration. Take a drink of water. <laughs> So simple. That's very good. That's very good point and good advice. Absolutely. Well, uh, Stephanie O'Day, we've talked about all the things you're passionate about that uh, come under the heading of slow living. We've talked about cooking, family, lifestyle, health, parenting. Tell me about your blogging. How do you find time for it? Uh, how'd you get started blogging? Just um, yeah, absolutely. Tell me I about uh, the so, so I, I have to admit that I, I don't use my crockpot every day anymore, and I don't write um, on the website every day, but I do send out a daily newsletter, and, and I like to reach my, uh, my readers through the newsletter. And um, because I have so many recipes written, it's not hard to just choose from my files and, and plop it into a, a newsletter. Um, so time wise, I don't think it takes that much time to do the things that I do. And in the, in the beginning, it was a lot of time. I, I worked really hard, um, but I, I'm fortunate now that I have this body of work that I can um, choose from and essentially copy and paste from, which um, which is great. And and I had this fire in my belly to make something from nothing. I had to find a way to work in order to to take care of my two-year-old. I'm worried now I never even mentioned that. She's fine now. <laughs> she's absolutely fine. So she's almost 16 and uh, perfectly healthy. And we found out that she had a gluten intolerance, which is celiac, which is absolutely very prevalent now. But but back um, years ago, it wasn't as commonplace and prevalent. So it took some testing for us to realize mm -hmm. that's what it was. So. Um, uh, because of that, we've had a completely gluten-free home since 2006, and all of my recipes happen to be gluten-free. Um, most of my readers aren't. Um, I do write for Simply Gluten-Free magazine, um, and, and I know an awful lot about gluten-free living, but um, most people just sort of gloss over my gluten-free notes. <laughs> Stephanie O'Day, the name of the program is Just Say It. So I want to give you an opportunity to just say whatever you might have on your heart today. We've we've talked about so much, but you know, we're in very interesting times. And uh, as far as slow living is concerned, what else would you like to say? Just say it. Just say it. Um, I, I think I would try and get the point across that um, if we're lucky, life is long. And so you might as well take the time to truly embrace every aspect of it. If you're struggling, it's just a season and just a, a small snippet of your life. And, and um, I would encourage you to sort of go quiet and, and slow down and go inward the way Dee described and, and pay attention to your thoughts and your inklings and your moods and see where they are swaying you. Um, my favorite way to go quiet is to go out in nature, um, specifically the beach and just wander about. And all of a sudden it seems like I have no worries in the world. And, um, and that's what I like. <laughs> it's nice to quiet your brain. It sure is. Stephanie O'Day, it has been a pleasure talking to you on Just Say It Today. Thank you for being my guest. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, finish our discussion, our conversation. And uh, it's just been wonderful to get to know you. Thank you so much for your time today. And I am going to try that rice pudding recipe okay. <laughs> in my slow cooker. <laughs> it's on your Facebook page. And um, 
uh, and so I hope that the atmosphere clears up there in Oh, it will. It, it will. It, you know, it, it's really interesting. There's so many people suffering. I don't ever want to make it seem like I'm complaining. It's just sort of a an, an eerie and very weird day that turns newsworthy. But, but there's definitely mm. a lot to be happy and grateful for. There sure is. You know, being thankful, the discipline of being thankful. If I find that if I just say, my thank yous in the morning, what I'm thankful for, mm -hmm. that it will really change my whole attitude, my heart attitude. Don't you agree, Stephanie? There's so I, much. I do. Yes, I do. Well, I I'm, th I'm thankful for you, my friend. <laughs> I'm going to. Now gonna... you sound like Mr. Rogers. You're going to make me cheer <laughs> up. You're awfully <laughs> sweet. Thank you, Dee. You're, you're most welcome. Stephanie, hang tight for just a few minutes. Okay. And, uh, uh, I, again, thank you for being on Just Say It. You bet. Well, it's been great to have Stephanie O'Day on Just Say It today. And I hope that you'll visit her website, visit her Facebook page, and learn more about slow living. I'm Dee James, and uh, I hope you'll join me next time on Just Say It. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>